Hi everyone and welcome. You are watching the third episode of a website design series and in this video we are going to take a look at creating features cards on our new fictional website. In the previous episodes we have established a basic structure, especially the header menu and then components and instances of buttons. We have also set up textile tokens. So if you'd like to go over that, definitely make sure to check out my channel where I have a playlist where all of these episodes are going to be compiled. And in this video, we are going to take a look, as I said, at features cards. Let's get straight into it. Let's think about uh, what's going to be necessary for this section to, to be created. Well, first of all, there definitely needs to be some kind of a headline, right? So I'm just going to take this um, title and option and drag to copy that over here. You can see that we have paired this text object with the H1 style, which is this um, token. Right now, we're just going to create an alternative, specifically H2. So again, for those of you familiar with HTML and web development, you know that websites have H1 and H2 headlines that specify kind of the hierarchy of headlines, right? So in our case, the H2 is going to be a bit smaller. Uh, there is no right or wrong answer on how big these headlines should be. It's always very specific, but uh, let's just detach the style by clicking on this icon, which is going to enable us to set up all these, uh, all these properties. So since H1 is 48 points, I think with H2 we could go for something slightly smaller. I think we could make H2 38 points, right? I think that's sufficiently smaller while at the same time still being very prominent. Or I think we could go to about 34. Yeah, I think that's, that's better. And to save this style, I'm going to click these four dots on this side of the text panel, create plus and then name this style H2, uh, H2, right? Description, we don't have to do this, but let's just type in second most important headline, right? But again, if you will be handing this over to developers, they will definitely know what is going on if, as soon as they see this H2 um, name, right? So this is going to be the H2. Two. What is this going to be used for? Well, I think this could be used as a title for our section. So let's just type in features, right? We're going to use that as a headline for our section. So that's going to be H2. And then we are also going to have individual features, which again are going to be one level lower. So if H1 is the website headline and H2 is features, then logically the names of individual features are going to be H3 right the third most important headline so again i'm going to copy this text object and then detach the style and set this font size to be even smaller right so i think we could be looking at 24 points as you can see if we order these by size you can see how we kind of go from the most prominent and important one to the less important ones and with that as we go down the hierarchy, the font size is being, is being shrunk down, right? So we are going to again select this text object and then create a new style for that. So again, H3, H3, we can type in third most important headline, create style. And you can see that when we now deselect everything in the local styles on this right side, the text styles that we currently have are H1, H2 and H3 and also paragraph text. Now, I think we could move that over here so that the headlines are at the top to make this easy to understand and follow. And then, of course, we are going to have the paragraph. So let's just use this text object to create a name for the first feature. So let's say we are not going to be creative at all and this headline is going to be called first feature. And then in the feature description, we're going to type in this is a description of the first feature of our app. We are going to briefly outline what this feature feature does. And of course, in our feature card, we are not going to have 
two h3 headlines which means i'm gonna click this text and go over here to text settings and then change the h3 style to paragraph text then i'm gonna shrink this all the way here and you can see that we kind of are getting the basic structure of our feature card and then we are probably going to need a button right so let me go to assets and then under local components on this page design I am going to click and drag this button component all the way here so that we can use this in our feature cards and our feature cards are gonna have icons so let me use the frame tool by pressing F on my keyboard and then I'm going to create a frame that will be approximately 64 pixels I'm going to rename this icon select the frame command R and type in icon right and this is going to be our icon I'm also going to set the rounding of this corner to 32 so that we get a fully rounded frame. And then I'm going to turn this into a component so that we have an icon component and I'm going to click and drag this with my option key being selected or alt key if you're using windows and we get an instance of the icon component i'm also going to change the icon component to be you know this dark gray background you can see the instance is being updated as well because we will be using icons for our feature cards right and then let me just select all these elements that we have here and then press shift a to add auto layout and of course i'm going to rename this to feature card right so this is going to be our feature card now when I resize this for those of you that have watched my previous videos you already know what's gonna happen I'm going to select these two text objects and then set the horizontal resizing to fill container because we have set up an auto layout this now happens and our feature card is getting a bit responsive spacing is going to be I think 16 works best in this case right then also we're gonna have a background so with this feature card selected I'm going to add a fill and we are also gonna get 24 on horizontal padding and 24 on a vertical padding right so we now get this beautiful element that is responsive and also what I'm gonna do is select the icon component and set under absolute position over here on the frame I'm going to enable that uh, and now this happens which is not what we want which means I'm going to select the feature card again and make sure there is a bit of space over here so that this icon has some space around it and it's actually recognizable and it does not collide with any other elements so let me go to independent paddings and then increase independent padding on the top to 64 and then I'm gonna select the icon component and move that to the top right so this is what is how this is going to behave right if I now resize this you can see that there is some additional space for this icon and at the same time it doesn't collide with any of these elements so that's exactly what we need now here's the thing this feature section is going to have a headline of features right so at least that's my intention and then you're gonna have multiple of these you're gonna have like three or four of these right and below these three or four you're gonna have a button and this button definitely has to be prominent but at the same time if you look at this layout you can see that having four very prominent elements like this is really uh, distracting I think it doesn't provide a understandable hierarchy and I think it's kind of unclear what you should focus on. I mean, of course, you have these objects, you have this button, so you know what to focus on. But even with that in mind, I would rather create a version of a button that is less prominent than this if I need to create a button that is less prominent, which is exactly what I need to do right now. So what this means is since we are using a component for this, I'm gonna go over to the button component that we are using and I'm going to click here to create a variant of this button, right? So now we have a button with two variants and this second variant is going to be called 
I would call this secondary or at least or not secondary but rather no background no background and this one is default and also when I select this component under properties I'm going to rename this property to importance or we could also type in type whatever whatever you uh, this is just naming for us to to understand what we have created right and um, so we would like to have this secondary or this no background button to have no background right but this means that the text should be i think black in order to be recognizable against white background which we are using on our website so then i'm going to select this again and also turn off these paddings so that we get zero on the horizontal padding and then zero on the vertical padding as well so now our button is smaller and it's just the text and it's it's evident that this button is less important than this one and also just to make sure that this actually looks as a button i'm going to select the button uh, the button object within the variant and i'm going to create under decoration in type settings in text here i'm going to select underline so that this looks as a clickable link exactly what we need and now let's uh let me do one thing which is let me remove these uh, select this button and then under importance i'm going to select no background right so this is now our feature card and i think that if we're going to have multiple feature cards and then one button at the end of that i think that's going to look better right you don't want to be uh, using that much of a prominent element too often so that the visual importance is kind of intact so that uh, users are actually able to uh, recognize that this is something prominent all right so this is what we have now i think uh, we could also reduce the opacity of the text to make this gray so let's go for like 40 percent opacity maybe a bit more 55 50 something like that i think that's readable and it's also responsive so let me now go to corner radius and add some corners let's say 16 and then one thing i'm gonna do is turn this into a component with this selected i'm gonna click create component and what i'm going to do here is select the headline and go to content and click on create component property this is going to be called feature headline and then similarly i'm going to create the description and then go to content again and create another new property and this one's going to be called feature description so now if we create an instance of this component we will be able to edit the headline right here right so that is simpler than editing the thing actually using our text tool right so we have the feature card component because we will be using these all over the website probably definitely multiple times which means that we now can duplicate this and i would say let's use that three times then select all of these shift a to add all the layout and then press enter and then go to horizontal resizing and set that to fill container so this means when we now do this these beautiful components are going to be resized along with their container and i'm going to rename this to features container and this features container is going to be similarly to this section is going to be also 1152 pixels wide 1152 and then i think since we have a lot of width we could use one more feature so let's just duplicate one of these so that we get four features in total right i think this works well right so let me select the first feature and type in first feature and then the second feature, third feature, and fourth feature. And then also I'm gonna change the description. So we're just gonna change numbers. But uh, in any case, here is how easily you can change the text since we have set up component properties. And I'm just gonna edit text here and it's gonna update these components. So what's really good about this approach is when, whenever you have something on your website that is being repeated, like these feature cards, you definitely wanna think about using a component for this 
because now let's say I want to have feature cards that are gray or I want to, you know, I want to use gray everywhere. That means I can just update the component and the instances are going to be reflecting that change, right? So this helps keep your web design consistent and that's very important. Additionally, there is this icon component and since we have four features, why should we have just one icon, right? So for now, we're just going to use um, placeholders. So let me just stack this horizontally and create four different icons, right? Or at least four different placeholders for icons. And I'm go going to differentiate these by color. So the second one is going to be uh, red like this then the third one is going to be blue and the fourth one is going to be green let's say keep in mind these are just placeholders and in future videos we are going to be creating icons for these features which means i'm going to click the second feature and change the icon variant to variant two similarly to the third one to variant three and the fourth one to variant four, right? So, and again, with these components, when I make up my mind and I want to change the second icon, you know, we have a feature of our app. So the likelihood that we are going to reuse a feature icon across our website is pretty high. And let's say I want to make sure that the icon stays consistent on all the whole website. And that's where also components and instances come in handy. So uh, that's why I have chosen this structure, right? So now what I'm going to do is select the features container, the headline and the button and again press shift a this is going to be also 1152 which means we can set the features container to fill container we can rename this whole auto layout to features section and then set the spacing to around 64 44 whatever value feels right and then also let's just take this feature section press shift a edit the vertical padding to 96 and just make this whole auto layout 1440 pixels wide and also i'm gonna change the alignment of this auto layout which means feature section is now going to be always in the middle and then also add a background which is going to be white and this is exactly what i was talking about if we now realize that we actually want to make these features gray we can do so right here in our features component so let me do that change that to gray and yeah we might change this later but for now let's just keep it at gray let's just make this uh, these features clearly recognizable against their background and let's rename this whole auto layout to features section container container and then i'm going to just take this whole thing and paste that into our website frame make sure it's centered by pressing option h and then i'm going to move that all the way to here so that there is no spacing between those and actually since here is the 96 point spacing and here is one as well i think we could remove one of those so with this features section container selected i'm going to go to independent padding and remove the top one so the top one is going to be zero and i think this space is sufficient for our purposes also what i'm going to do is select the features container within the feature section within the feature section container right and uh, i'm going to set the spacing to 24 so that it actually matches all the uh, these columns right you can see that all these features span exactly three columns so that's very good for consistency and let's launch the prototype and actually see what we have created and yeah this is what we have created today this beautiful features section i also think we could make this button text less generic so let me just select the button within this right let me just select this and then button text, we're gonna change that to learn more. And we actually are going to select all these buttons within these features. So let me just select a command click and select this one, then command again, and then command again. And we are going to change all of these to learn more, right? And now all of these are learn more. And then with this button, this could say more about our features. 
And yeah, I think this looks more convincing. In future videos, we are going to finalize these icons, create more sections, etc. So if you want to keep learning about website design in Figma, definitely make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future uploads. And if this video helped you understand web design a little bit more, I would appreciate you leaving a like. And I will see you in the next episode of website design in Figma. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next one.